Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Replay roundup yet again, tank destroyers. This is going to be the last tank destroyer replay roundup before I show you the runners-up and the winner. So we're kicking off with Harrigan Joe in his T25AT. This is the non-turreted, obviously you can tell just by looking at it. The non-turreted American Tier 7 tank destroyer. Its counterpart obviously being the T25-2. The advantage that the T25AT has since it doesn't have the turret, is that it gets this 105mm gun, which is essentially the same gun as the T29 heavy tank, just faster reload, more accurate, better aiming time. Um, and obviously the T25-2 has to stick with a, a slightly upgraded version of the 90mm gun that the Hellcat uses at Tier 6. So what Joe's doing here, he's sitting back and letting the scouts do their thing. Now, under ideal circumstances, this is exactly how you should be playing a tank destroyer. He's not the one spotting these targets. And he has all sorts of cover between him and them. More than 15 metres in front of him, so he can fire at them without giving his position away. They're not going to see his muzzle flash and be able to spot him through the cover. And it's basically that VK2801 down there and these guys over here, who are spotting the targets for him. He can't see through these bushes, they're too far away from him. And this is classic tank destroyer gameplay. This is what tank destroyers do. The limitation, of course, being that you are completely at the mercy of your team's scouts. If nobody's spotting, you can't shoot at anything. Oh, he's blown the tracks off that KV-1 and set him on fire. And there's his second kill. Unfortunately, we're now fresh out of scouts, and everybody on the enemy team who was heading across the middle there has now made it past that stretch of open ground, so there's nobody left to spot them. So now's the time to move up. Now the guys over by G2 haven't run into anybody yet, but Joe's not stupid. He knows there are enemy tanks coming around that corner, and they didn't kill everybody that went past. So he's pinging the map, let these fellas know. Yeah. Targets to your front, engage. Just keeping an eye open around here for enemy artillery. Whoa! There goes a DB, and there's the AMX 105. Fires, misses. Well, that was quite lucky. That actually looked like a direct hit. Possibly just missed. Hard to tell don't see a penetration hole. Well, well it, it obviously didn't penetrate because he only took, f what, 41 damage. And now this is what we're talking about. 3601H, T50, M6. I'm pretty sure there's an AMX 1375 up there too. And all we have left, covering that corner, they've nailed the T25 slash 2. And there's a KV-1S around the corner trying to hold these guys off. Yep. Oh, it's an AMX-12T, not a 1375. Oh, 12T just nailed our observation ports. Which is going to cut down our view range drastically. Oh, good hit on the M6. And I'm quite surprised artillery isn't shooting at him. Ah, missed the M6. They're going to kill that. KV-1S. The 12 T's just rushed ahead. He's probably trying to flank him. Or is he dead? Oh, the 12 T's dead. What a mistake. Okay, there goes the T-15. So it's an M6 and a 3601H. Both closing in on that KV-1S.
Looks like the M6 rammed him, and bam, there we go. Finished him off. Oh, the 12T is still alive. And we miss again. Now, if these three guys were to turn around and rush us, we could kill one of them. Possibly two. Depends how good they are. What are they doing? Why are they running away? Oh no, they're turning around to face him. They're getting around the corner into cover of that rock. So that's not completely stupid. 3601. Now, M6 or 12T. M6. Now this 12T either hasn't loaded, or he's trying to save his shots to get around us, which is what he's doing. But the manoeuvrability and speed of the T25 AT catches people out every time. Now, the scores are 11, but we're the only tank left on our team. And we're not even a tank, we're a tank destroyer. It's us and three artillery. So they've still got a VK 3002 DB, a Panzer IV, two artillery, and their Hummel drive is good. Luckily, their other artillery is in a failed platoon. T-57 Tier 2 artillery. So he's not that much of a threat. But the smart money says, head back to base. And he's asking there in team chat, you know, anybody seen them? Dead KV-1 driver. Yeah, thinks they're coming up behind the glacier. So everybody's pulling back to defend the base. Whoa, Hummel! Oof, damn, that was close. <laughs> that could have ended very differently. Okay, right. That's evened the odds up slightly. And the only two real threats left are the DB and, well, the Panzer IV isn't that much of a threat unless he manages to get around us. But don't forget, this is actually a patch 7.5 replay when the Panzer IV was good. With his Panther turret and his L70 high velocity 75mm gun and there they are okay okay we're good we know where they both are we don't know where the artillery is but not too concerned about the artillery they've nailed our SU-5 and good shot Hummel driver it's the second kill for the Hummel so Panzer IV how dumb is this guy going to be is he going to try to engage in a sniping duel with a T-25 <laughs> yes he is <laughs> happy with that Kill number eight. And there's still just under seven minutes of this game left, so we can go hunting or we can cap. And Joe's telling the artillery, one of you stay in base, just in case the other one come with me. And that's exactly what they're doing. AMX 105's coming with him, but guess what? Didn't need to. Oh, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How can you miss from that range? But then again, so did he. And this guy is never going to outmaneuver a T25 AT. So, nine kills. Nothing to be ashamed of. Um, 1700 XP. Not bad. I suspect he's not running a premium account, though. I would have expected more than that. And, yeah, with the amount of credits he earned as well. Yeah. No, um, that's a standard account. That's that's definitely a 2,000 XP game. Um, 70,000 credits, at least, if you'd been running a premium account. Not bad at all. Very, very well done, obviously. Top Gun and Patch 7.5, Bolter's Medal. So, well done, Harriga Joe. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right there. In your T25 AT. Good game. Pleasure to watch. Another Patch 7.5 replay. Standard battle on Muravanka, the magic forest. This is Arsakes, or Arsakis. Oh, I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. I'm going to call you Arsakes. Apologies if I'm wrong. Uh, this was a good game. I mean, you know, these replay rounds, they're all good games. But this one is special for, not just because, you're about to see a Stug 3 get a Steel Wall medal. But he really had to do it all in this match. 
Now the first thing that's surprising here is he doesn't do what all the tank destroyers always do in this match when you start from the north and rush straight into the magic forest. Instead he heads for where the fighting is always the thickest. So, well done. Now it's a tier 5 game. But the only tier 3s, well there's one scout tank and the artillery is tier 3. Everything else is at least tier 4. Oh, stock Panzer of th oh, actually no, it was a Panzer 3 4. That explains the turret. And yet that was an M3 me getting a kill. I know, do try to restrain yourselves. No kills yet, but he's done some damage. And, oh, KV. With his gun pointing right at us. He seems to have switched fire to the BBR. And there's a study in the open over there. We don't have a line of sight in him, but somebody's cleaning his clock. He makes 40. We should be able to hit him while staying safe. From the tanks on the ridge on the other side. Just there we go, that's the gun the pressure we need. Oh, T25 shoot at us. Heads are on the hill opposite. And again, doesn't get the kill, does a lion's share of the damage. We haven't actually been hit by anything yet. A good hit on that Hetzer, but he's now dropped out on the side. And there's another M3 Lee. Uh, we can't see anything of him other than the top of his turret. Um, and that one probably hit. And here come the bouncers. <laughs> and there's a B1 somewhere just peppering the front of this stud with shots. M3 Lee's trying as well. And this is why M3 Lee is a shit. Because in order to get that gun pointed at the stud, have to come so far forward and into our line of fire. And there's our first actual kill. And I don't know if you've noticed, oh another bounce right off the gun mantle. But look at the map. There's nobody here but us and that M3. Lee's yelling for help, but nobody's listening. And to be fair, there's not that many of us left. So, it's down to us. And the best thing our sakes can do here... Is, oh, and another hit. B1 hit him. Where the hell is that B1? He just killed our commander. And that headset just damaged our gun. Now, we don't have a first aid kit. We don't have a repair kit. Oh, KV1. He's fired, he's missed. And we're trying to... Oh, another bounce. And another hit. It's a dead commander, gun damaged. And another bounce. And another hit. Thankfully, enemy artillery appears to be largely incompetent. I mean, they're trying. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not succeeding. Ah, there's that B1. Wow, he actually managed to kill our commander from over there. Lee's moved up. Well, he hasn't moved up, but he's just letting the letting us know that he is actually behind us. Yeah, we know. Uh, chin -chin. Now, with the damaged gun, the accuracy of this L7 is not fantastic. The other thing about the Stug is it has a quite a limited ammo load. We're down to nine shots of armor piercing. Oh, could have used a kill on that one. But still, 120. What was actually a higher than average damage roll. Oh, that's it. And he's knocked our gun out. He's using the derp gun. Come on, come on. Oh, is he? Actually, that could be the L38 75. Anyway, we've got him. No, I don't think it is the derp gun. I think that's the really, really crappy 75mm. And this Lee's having a good go. 
Look at this KV-1. I mean, he's, he's giving it his best shot. Oh, he's bringing his gun round. And we're getting hit from all different sides. Somebody over on the left flank was peppering us with shots. Another shot just came in, bounced off that headset. So, yeah, steel wall <laughs> in a stug. Four of us left. Six of them. Two armor piercing shots left. One armor piercing shot left. And we. That Churchill was going to be in cover, but he stopped. <laughs> Cheers, sucker. Right. He's got three shots left. And there are four enemy tanks to kill. So, you know, you do the maths. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Why did that not kill the Churchill? Oh, crap. And another bounce. This is our last shot. Churchill on 23 health. Come on. Get turned around. Come on. He's begging for health here. Yes, got him. Now he's out of ammo. Still two enemy tanks. There's a Marder and that B1. And the B1's on full health. Well, if he's going to kill anything, he's going to have to ram it to death. And he's not going to ram a B1 to death. So, you can at least still spot targets for your artillery. There's the Marder. Lee's yelling for help. Well... The amount of help we can actually give at this point is extremely limited, but a Stug should be able to ram a Marder. It's just a question of building up enough speed, but the Marder can easily kill an M3D, and he's got the position for it. Come on, Lee, have him. Have him. Fortunately, we've just blown our own tracks off, and the Lee gets the kill. <laughs> Lee actually has four kills. Check this guy out. And we're capping. And all we have left is that B1. And somebody's been punishing him. And it's more than likely the Hetzer. And he's going for a suicide. <laughs> he's actually going for a suicide round, but any second now, anybody's captured. The Hetzer kills him. Game over. What a match. What an incredible match. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> All 32 shots fired, 25 of which hit the target, most of those with a damaged gun. And he took 18 hits in a stug. <laughs> What's going on? Is that allowed? Um, can we can we check the rules and see whether or not, you know, he's actually allowed to do that? <laughs> so, yeah. There we go, steel wall. Um, a load of kills, a load of damage, and steel wall in a Stug 3. You know, I, our sakes, I salute you. Next up, you may remember Krubel uh, from an earlier replay roundup. This time he's in his AMX 50 Foch, the tier 9 French tank destroyer. It's a tier 9 standard battle here on Serene Coast, and we're joining him a couple of minutes into the game where he's he hasn't actually managed to hit anything yet. Uh, he had a pretty bad start to the game. The position he was in relied heavily down over by the, uh, the J5 spot. The position he was in relied heavily on scouts spotting targets for him. They were all out of his view range, so he's moved down. And he's had a pretty frustrating game so far. And it's about to get a lot more frustrating. Scores are even. Four kills on each side. Yep. 
Now there's a stock, completely 100% stock, Tiger 2 on the team. Who is going to be a massive pain in the arse. Where is he? No target spotted. Nobody's interested in going forward. It's pretty much just heavy tank city here. The only medium they have is Super Pershing. Ah, oh, here he is. Watch this. Dickhead. Now, the spot that crew was in here is not great. Watch this idiot. He, he can't, he's got no line of fire on the guys on the hill over there because these um, railway cars are blocking his line of fire, which means they can't shoot him either, but more importantly, he can't shoot them. Watch this Tiger 2. What is this prick doing? You know, sometimes your own team are the biggest threat to your survival. So Krill's had a pretty frustrating game so far. Good hit on that ISA, and he's been, had his tracks blown up by somebody, of course. Aiming right for the side there. Actually, that one appeared to hit his gun mantle. It went slightly high and to the left. Got him. Well, somebody's firing back. Don't worry, that Tiger 2 hasn't finished making life difficult for us. Got no shot at that ISU. Somebody spotted him. Not quite sure who, but it, it, it ain't us. And we've got no line of fire. And there's an IS-3 down in the town there. And we've got a heavy moving up on the right. But they're being very, very cautious about it. And you can sort of you can sort of feel Cruel's frustration with the way the game is developing. Nobody's moving up and doing anything. And that was probably it. Come on, Tiger, get the hell out of the way. Do you want to, you're just trying to get us killed or what? Tiger P down there, there's an IS-3 down there. There's that M103 still. Oh no it isn't, the M103 is dead. Bounce on the Tiger P. Oh, it's a medium tank. Looks like a T-43 or a Pershing. I'm not sure. Right, the Tiger P is gone. Right, and is, is, is nobody going to move forward? And it's as if at this point he's just decided, right, you know what, enough's enough. I don't even care anymore. And he just goes mental, just turns into a demon and charges. Watch this. Yag Panther. IS3. Yag Panther bounces. And that is exactly where you want to shoot. An IS3. Artillery. Another bounce. Another shot into this IS-3. Now IS-3's got the BL-9 gun, but he doesn't appear to know how to use it. And then, there goes the IS-3. Now here comes the Yag Panther, and you can always rely on enemy artillery to help you out <laughs> when you're in trouble. So there's a friendly fire kill for the uh, enemy SU-8, who nails his own Yag Panther. But Krul ain't finished yet. Uh, he's had enough of this pussying around. He's looking for stuff to kill. If nobody's going to move forward, then screw it. He'll do it. Make these heavies look stupid in his tank destroyer. Now, T-34, and I think there's an IS down there as well. Yep. Okay, the T-34 killed his gunner. So you will use a first aid kit for that. Now he got his tracks blown off. But he does have the gun traverse. Hit these guys anyway. 
IS bouncers. Yeah, kill the IS, then finish off the T-34. Oh, somebody gets a shot in on the T-34, and somebody else kills an M-12 artillery. Right, who's next? Who wants some? Come and have a go if you think you're... Oh, an S-51. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. And kill him. Oh, not quite. Crap, he hit us. Killed our commander. But we're going to reload before he does. Kill number five. And he ain't done yet. He's already used his first aid kit to get his gunner back up. So now his commander's dead, which is going to reduce his view range significantly. And oh look, the team have finally decided to get their arse into gear. And IS starts capping. There's the SU-152. He takes a hit, he fires, he bounces. He's got the BL-10. Don't kill him. Can we beat his reload? Turns out, yes we can, but we missed. So he's not where we thought he was. And he fires, he goes for the IS. Big mistake. That's nailed the ISU. And now all they have left is the incompetent team killing artillery. Is he incompetent or is he just reckless? Is there a difference? Either way, he's dead too. So, seven kills. Uh, and the game started off really, really badly for Krill. Um, he was in a very, very poor position at the start of the match, which you didn't see. Um, and then in a very frustrating spot where he just, just couldn't shoot at anything. And it was as if he just, halfway through, he just snapped and thought, you know what, screw it. Charge! <laughs> and uh, it appears to have paid off. So we're going to finish off this roundup with a Tier 7 battle on Redshire. And this is Skyheart from the Southeast Asian server in his M18 Hellcat. Tier 6 American Tank Destroyer. Now when I first started watching this replay, I initially thought, oh yeah, here we go. T-49 and M-18 think the light tanks rushing off ahead of everybody else. Well, in the case of the T-49, yeah. But not Skyhawks. No, he's smarter than that. t is about to run into much more trouble than he can handle. As is usually the case with uh, inexperienced T-49 drivers who think they're driving T-50-2s. Ooh, look, a Yag Panther and the Easy 8. Yep, you're dead. So a first shot misses. This guy's like me. My first shot never hits anything either. So we've lost a T-49 and an ELC. Now where's that Yag Panther and where's that Sherman? More importantly, where the hell is our support? Yep, everybody's stopping to take pot shots at that KV-1S and here comes trouble. Now he's aiming for this guy's tracks. He damages his tracks with his first shot. And there you go. Now, the Yag Panther ain't dumb. He uses a repair kit. Skyhawks ain't dumb either. He takes his other set of tracks off. Uses his repair kit to back off. Puts his next shot through the tracks to keep this guy. Ah, there we go. And that is how you utterly humiliate a Yag Panther in your M18. We could really use some support down here, fellas. Looks like that one went right through. One of our tracks and here comes damaged. artillery. Come on, guys. Move up. Kill this guy for me. Thank you. 
Okay, KV-13 dueling it out with that KV-1S. But I'll guarantee you, as soon as that KV-13 comes around the side, and there they all are. Half the enemy team on the ridge, just obliterating. They've given their positions away. Kill number two. Now we need these guys to start shooting at stuff again. Ah, KV-1S. Kill number three. Now hopefully, oh, that's a, quite a mercenary way of looking at it. Ah, oh, yes, yelling for help over there. Hopefully, all these guys on the ridge line are going to start shooting at him. And there goes our camo net and our binoculars. And as soon as they open fire, we can start killing them. Because they're going to spot that IS sooner rather than later. Come on, folks. Don't be shy. And there we go. A BDR. Penetrated, didn't appear to do any damage. Somebody else hit him as well. Somebody hit him again. 3600H. Blew his tracks off. Come on, reload. Yeah, bounced. Shot went wide. Dinged off his turret. And that one went wide to the left. Just missed completely. Come on. Ah, oh, yes, nails it. Now there's trouble. An AC-46. Like right and that one went through. Unfortunately, now he's no longer being spotted. And he's going to drop off our radar. Oh, we've tracked him. He's used a repair kit. And he's gone. And you notice as soon as he's no longer being spotted and we don't actually have the sights on him, your sights automatically adjust for shell drop over range. And I don't know if you noticed there, the second he disappeared, our point of aim dropped. And Cruel didn't compensate for that, and so the next shot he fired went low. But it's not a criticism. It, it, we're, we're, we're talking kind of advanced World of Tanks tactics here. There's not a lot of people understand the way the game mechanics work to, to that degree. Um, it's no criticism intended. Just pointing something out for you, my loyal subscribers. Something for you to be aware of. If that happens, raise your sights a fraction, and you'll probably still hit him. Now, the middle of the map has been left wide open, and the enemy team are making a concerted push through here. Yep, we've spotted one of them, that KV-13, but he's not the only one. There he is, over on the, on the right there, a 3001P. So we've led the attack all the way over on the western side. Now we're coming back to reset the cap. He's... He, He's basically just doing it all in this game. There's the cap reset. Kill number four. And now back onto the attack. Got no shot at that 46, we're going to have to move up. So if the 46 is on the reverse slope of the hill, following this T-34 up should, should be the best way to do it. Sticking to the low ground on the reverse slope of the hill from the 46 to mask our approach. Because we, uh, we did have a 3601H on the other side of the hill spotting him, but the 46 has killed him. And now he could be anywhere. So uh, we've had a fair share of luck in this game so far. We've, we've taken a couple of hits that basically just damaged our tracks or bounced. But you can't afford to rely on luck when you're driving something that has 13 millimeters of armor. So Skyheart's going to have to be careful. There he is. Gotcha. Kill number five. 
Now. Enemy heavy over there. And there was an SU-100 facing off against him, but their artillery killed him. So we park on top of this hill and we wait for our binoculars. Let's get into a better spot. He's out there somewhere, but we don't have the view range. There he is. He's just disappeared again. Nobody's got line of sight, but sit here. Count to five. Wait for your binoculars to kick in. There he is. Oh, unlucky. T20 gets the kill. Well, oh, fair enough. Now, <laughs> Skyheart only has two rounds of arm piercing ammo left. He's done a phenomenal amount of damage to the enemy team. So he's got two armor piercing and his five high explosive. Enemy team only have a Panzer IV and their two artillery. Come on, little Artie. Come to daddy. Got to be around here somewhere. There's the Panzer IV. Oh, M41. And he's facing the wrong way. Oh my god, we missed. Oh, this could be, this, this could be hairy. Hit him. Didn't kill him. Oh. Splash damage alone from the M41 can be bad news. Reload. Oh, and we pull the trigger before he does. <laughs> well, there's Top Gun. But guess what? We're going to get Bowler's Medal. Big boat. So, there we go. Sky Hearts. Um, from the Southeast Asian server. In a tier 7 game. In his tier 6 M18 Hellcat. Um... Doing exceptionally well. Seven kills, three damaged. Fired 27 shots, nearly ran out of ammo. Um, <laughs> 22 of them hit the target, took three hits. Only one of them actually did any damage. Had a little bit of luck on his side there. Um, and walks away with Top Gun and Boulder's Medal. And that wraps up this particular set of Tank Destroyer roundups from the replay contest. As always, take care on the battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.